So it's been kind of tough to watch the Blazers this year. I mean, I know we're building for the future. We've got young players that we're trying to develop, but it really just, it sucks to see your team lose this much. But from the very beginning of the season, there was one game on the calendar that we all had circled. Dame's return to Portland, his first time playing in the Moda Center as an opponent, and there was no force on earth that was gonna keep us from this game. Before we start talking about Dame's return to Portland, if you haven't already, make sure to leave this video a like, give us a subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on one of our videos. So obviously, if you haven't heard, uh, the Blazers traded Dame to Milwaukee in the offseason. We have a two and a half hour video of his time with the Blazers if you want to get a sense of how much he meant to us. And like I said, it's been a bad year for the Blazers. We're obviously tanking, and I get that, but it is hard to watch your team only win 15 to 48 games. Yeah, to be honest, I haven't even tuned in to like a ton of games this year. I've been watching other NBA games like gotta keep up with the NBA and the Blazers. It's tough to, I mean, we have a couple bright spots. We got, you know, Ant, Jeremy's been playing decent. Yeah, it's been tough overall to watch. Milwaukee, on the other hand, they have one of the best records in the NBA, but they did just fire their coach and they replaced him with Doc. We also have a video on that if you want to get our thoughts on that. Basically, we thought it was kind of hilarious and we weren't sure if it was going to work, but still, this was a contest between two teams going in very different directions. Yeah, and emotions, obviously, for Blazers fans for Damian Lillard were super high tonight you know I was listening to local radio they were asking people you know are you gonna be crying going to the game <laughs> when they show that tribute video is it gonna be too much is Dame gonna cry maybe during the announcement and like we said we went to this game and the energy I gotta say I haven't felt that energy in the Moda Center literally since the 2019 playoffs it's been that long five years I mean that was the last time we had a sold out playoff game when yeah, you think about it, it. Is. I've been to a handful of games this year and I, I love I love going to games. I love watching the team play, but you can tell like the energy is just not the same. The vibes just not the same. So to go to a game like this, where it felt like it had that playoff atmosphere, the Moda Center was sold out. Place was rocking. Like we said earlier, me and Ben went to this game, got there pretty much right on time. We got a pretty good sense of when we need to get there. We got there right at the end of warmups. Saw the national anthem, then it was time for them to introduce the starting lineup. And weirdly enough, they introduced Dame second for the Bucks for some reason. I have multiple problems with this. First of <laughs> all, when CJ came back, they had him last. I don't know if that was normal for the Pelicans. I'm guessing it's not, but they had him last. Setup was perfect. Having him second was so damn dumb. Either way, though, Dame still got the standing ovation. It went for pretty long. I thought it was going to go for a bit longer, but. Well, I told you, this is going to go until they cut it off. Yeah, they basically had to just start saying, like Giannis Antetokounmpo, Malik, Brooke Lopez, Be Malik yeah. Beasley. They basically had to just say it while the crowd was still going crazy. So obviously Dame was going to get a massive standing O. Not a single person was booing in there. And if they were, f them. You couldn't f near them. I did love after they announced the rest of the Bucks starting lineup. They just showed Doc on the big screen. And honestly, the whole crowd just started laughing. Even Doc and was kind of laughing. And then Doc started laughing. Like, it was weirdly charming. You know, Doc at this point, I think, just kind of understands the meme <laughs> of himself. So he just plays into it, which I respect that. The game itself started pretty fast, but Dame himself really didn't. He was not very good in this game overall. And his very first shot of the game was a standard deep Dame three. And he missed it. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of shocked. He did get a layup later on, and honestly, he didn't really hit that many threes all game yet. I think like three total. He was getting to the bucket a bit, but what has to be said about the first quarter is both teams played zero defense. None whatsoever. 38-37 at the end of the first quarter. Also, Dame got not one, but two tribute videos. Has that ever happened in NBA history? No shot. I don't think so. Okay, but to be fair, and you were kind of memeing it a bit while we were there, the first one was like the on the court, you know, OKC shot, rocket shot, rookie of the year, 2019 playoffs, all that. The second one was for his off the court stuff he's done in the community, which if you're not familiar, Dame has done a ton of stuff in Portland. So I think he deserved it. I like the move by the Blazers to give him the two. It was just so fucking funny how after both videos though, they have to pan to him on the bench. And yeah. the first time, you know, he's like, okay, yeah, you know, that's the tribute video. It's like, yeah, I'll acknowledge the crowd. And the second time they did it, it's just like, he kind of looks up. He's like, well, we did this again. Yeah. Another Another one. He was even saying in the post game press conference that like his teammates were making fun of him. They're like, oh, they're going to play a video for you at every time out. Which we should have. I wish 100% should have. I was telling you, if there's a 
fucking third one, then like <laughs> two is the max. Now let's talk a little bit about, I guess, Dame's replacement. That doesn't feel fair to say, but Scoot Henderson, the guy we drafted, the guy that's got a ton of hate, first half. Oh, he was good. God damn, like one of the best halves Scoot has played the entire year. He just had a really good fourth quarter against 76ers, but he had a drive around Dame that got the crowd going with a dunk. He had a three at the end of the first quarter. He was hitting some mid-range shots and really was just playing well and looked great in the first half. Oh, he looked awesome. Giannis though, he was he was doing what he does. I will say though, this was the first time I'd ever seen Giannis in person. So it was the first time we got to do the countdown when he shoots free throws, you know, one, two, three. <laughs> it's a lot of fun in person to do it. Yeah, and I feel like maybe it throws Giannis off. He was decent at the line until the end, but we'll get to that. But the NBA needs to do something about how not only does he take forever when he shoots the free throw, he also has that warm up routine before like get rid of it like <laughs> we already waste enough time reviews we don't need to waste another 15 seconds every time he goes the damn line Blazers, they had a balanced first half though. DeAndre Ayton was weirdly enough hitting a lot of mid-range jumpers. I guess Chauncey gave him the green light for that shot, but all right. Malcolm Brogdon was getting some crafty buckets. Anthony Simons was hitting threes. Blazers were up by two at halftime. 67-65 at half. Fucking no defense in this game. You kind of expect that from the Bucks. Their defense sucks, but the Blazers have, I think, the worst offense in the league, or if not, they're one of the worst. So really is not a good look for the Bucks defense. You should be able to hold the Blazers of all teams in check, but they couldn't all night. Third quarter, the Blazers were able to hold, you know, a two to six point lead for most of the third quarter. Chauncey, though, made the interesting choice to hold Scoot out for the first six minutes of the third, despite how hot he was in the first half. Like, I'm sure he's got his lineups and obviously he's forgot more basketball than we'll ever know, but just play the kid at the start of the half. Like, yeah. he was playing so well. They really should have, but either way, Blazers still took a five point lead going to the fourth. 96 points again after three quarters. Come on, Doc. I know you just arrived, but you gotta patch up that defense a little bit. Blazers immediately took a 10 point lead at the start of the fourth. Bucks though, they chipped away at the lead. Again though, DeAndre Ayton was hitting mid-range shots, keeping the Bucks at bay. Blazers held, you know, about a six point lead as the game started to wind down and the end of this game. Before we get to the end of this game, I will say 437 left, Bucks timeout. There's an amazing sign from a kid. It looks like at the very top of the arena that said, go win a ring, then come back home. He's coming back home. He 100% I mean, he, is. He just said, he also said some stuff before the game that he was open to the return. It's going to happen. So for Blazer fans, that's what we want to see. We want to see Dame get a ring, maybe get two, and then come back home. And that get, would be amazing. And get two more. Yeah. I mean, we don't need to get too delusional here, but <laughs> that's the hope. But back to the game, this ending was just nuts. And first, we got to make fun of our boy DeAndre Aiden because... Uh, he played well tonight, but this was a bad <laughs> Giannis <moment>. just <laughs> has him. Like, Ant, there was a pick and roll. Ant threw a lob to him. And once again, on the lob on a pick and roll. Giannis blocked him and he had to be getting flashbacks from the 2021 NBA Finals. One of these days, maybe he'll dunk on Giannis, but probably not. He's just got his number. <laughs> he just has to. Yeah. Like he's got to get the monkey off his back. What's even funnier is on the same possession, he gets it back, misses like a little lamp, gets it back again and then has it stolen from him. Like yeah. just a possession to forget if you're DeAndre Ayton. <laughs> classic DeAndre Ayton. Next play, Bucks had the ball back and I don't know about you, but it kind of felt like for the entire fourth quarter, we were just waiting for Dame to make some really big clutch play. And this was kind of as close as he got. He had a nice little drive and then he had a dunk with a little over a minute left. Dropped the deficit down to only one point. This was as close as it had been basically all game. And then of course on the next possession, we turn the ball over because Ant throws a lazy pass to Jeremy Grant. So Bucks get it back. And then with 50 seconds left, Dame had a look for a three, but he missed. But after Ant got the rebound, the Bucks double teamed him. They got the turnover and then Dame threw the assist to Giannis and the Bucks took the lead and I, I was devastated at this point. I was like, F how are we gonna choke this? Like, come on. Someone help him now, now, now. I thought we were gonna choke, but shout out to Anthony Simons. Really, this is the actual Dame replacement. He hit this like weird kind of floater where he hit left to right, and I did not expect it to go in whatsoever. Tough ass shot, but Anthony's got a little bit of that clutch sheet in him. Like he learned from Dame. Huge shot in his career, maybe one of the biggest in his career thus far. Love to see. Next possession, it was very obvious. Dame was trying to get that step back three and fucking everyone in that arena was like, please no. no.
They hedged him hard though. Aiton went way out on him. To be fair, he got Brooke Lopez a wide, wide open three, but he missed. Blazers got the rebound. Eventually, Jeremy Grant hit two free throws and the Blazers fouled Giannis to prevent them from getting a three. Giannis missed the first shot from the line, intentionally missed the second. And how about the fucking Portland Trail Blazers taking down the Milwaukee Bucks? Not at all what I thought would happen when we went to this game. Not what I thought either, but gotta give Doc Rivers some more hate <laughs> here. Okay, end of the game. Why is Damian Lillard inbounding the ball? Great question. To Giannis, when you're down three, when you know the Blazers can foul and send Giannis to the line? Better yet, why does Giannis then turn up court instead of getting the ball back to Dame? Yeah, that's what I thought. I was okay. You inbound it to Giannis, maybe immediately get it back to Dame, but no, Giannis is like, I'm gonna try to play hero ball. Just terrible execution at the end by the Bucks. A hell of an ending to an unbelievable night for Blazer fans. Very, very emotional. Neither of us cried. I just want to point that out. I don't think either of us. Uh -huh. uh, don't stop it. <laughs> it still feels weird to see Dame in a Bucks uniform, if I'm being honest. Yeah, not only does it feel weird, but just doesn't feel like he's being used right. Like, I get it. It's Giannis. He's got to get his touches. It's his team. 100%. But they just don't really play through Dame enough. Or he just does not look like the same player whatsoever. Like, he went from, what, 33 points a game last year down to 25 this year. And obviously, he's playing with better players. That's going to happen. But he just does not look like the Damian Lillard I've been watching for the past like five years. Hey, he's still getting that ring though. And then he's coming home and getting another one for us. He's getting the ring, but it's not happening this year. Oh, f off. I mean, could you think Doc's going to get it done this year with that crappy defense? I said a week ago, they win in spite of Doc. Okay. I'll believe it when I see it. That's the video, guys. What did you think of Dame's return to Portland? I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving it a like, as it really does help us out. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.